Elsane and I were, were actually talking about the Modern Festival ad that was going by. I figured, well, we could just have this conversation online. You're you're going to be partaking of the Modern Festival, trying to qualify? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking it up right now. So it looks like in order to qualify for the Modern Festival, I see, you have to go... You have to get five wins in a five-round modern prelim. So there's a bunch of modern prelims that replace the daily events. Okay. Modern, obviously. And if you go 5-0 or 4-1, actually. So you have to go 5-0 or 4-1 in one of the prelims to queue okay. for the modern, modern festival, which is awesome because if you win the modern festival, you get a copy of every modern legal set plus a foil modern master set and a foil magic 2015 set. So, like, it's oh, an insane prize. One of every card in modern. Yes. That's a lot of cards. It, including well, one of every modern legal set. So you even get like Jace, the Mind Sculptor, which is banned in modern. <laughs> oh, wow. And you get to double up on the modern Masters cards, right? You'll get two Tarmac yep. out of this. Oh, yeah. So and, it's, and, a, and a foil modern Masters on top. So three Tarmac Yeah. And uh, in, in with, uh, with this being like a digital product prize, it's not like the, the Magic Online Championships where first gets, you know, Invite to the mocks and all this other stuff, and second gets a bunch of packs and, and some sets. This the prize actually is if you just make top eight, you're getting sets. You know, as long as you make top four, rather, you get like actually no, the whole top eight gets at least a modern masters 2015 set. So like, just I love these like high stakes Magic Online tournaments because it's like getting to play in like you know a mini Grand Prix, not a real Grand Prix, because I would still rather win a Grand Prix. But I get to do it from my house, and it, if I go O2, then I get to go you know enjoy the rest of my Saturday without having flown somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You and I both enjoyed the uh, Vintage Festival, which sounds like it's in a relatively similar format. The prizes were not as sweet for the Vintage Festival. Um, I'm not complaining. I, I like my foil set of uh, Vintage Masters. I get to use all the foil power now. But uh, that was a similar thing. It was go for one or five. Oh, qualify for this nice big tournament. Just run it back, have uh, all VSL members, three VSL members in the top four again. That would, that would be sweet, yeah. It was me, you, and Ephraim on the top four. And Speaking of top four, Josh is going to have a top four cards this game. <laughs> Yikes. So. All right. These are the third decks. The players have split with their A decks, split with their B decks. Now it is Mardu Dragons against Tom's Blue-Black Control deck. So Tom is on the Adrian Sullivan version of Blue-Black Control. There's not a single creature anywhere in his list. And Josh is on the second dragon-themed deck of the set of three. So the other two havens are now coming out to play. So Josh had Mold of Four and Drew Draconicor, which he cannot cast against Tom. <laughs> yeah, this game doesn't seem like it's going to last very long. Well, it actually might last a long time, just Josh will have 0% to win the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blue-black control list, is it takes a little while to win with this. It's basically seven Planeswalkers as the victory conditions. So four Ashiox and Ugin and... Uh, two name? Ugins and a Liliana. <laughs> two Ugins and a Liliana, right. Yeah, so a pretty aggressively Planeswalkered up deck. Tom declined to play Ashiok here. Yeah, this the this matchup game one is pretty bad for Josh, and then mulling to four obviously makes it incredibly bad. How about but, drawing murderous cut and draconic roar? Yeah, that doesn't help. He's he's basically on a fact finding mission now, right? He just wants to understand what Tom's up to so that he can sideboard for games two and three. And Tom is going to do his best to sell Josh on the fact that he's playing Esper Dragons by playing that Temple of Enlightenment. <laughs> nice. But uh, I don't know if Josh will... It, it won't change that much. I mean, it's, I guess it depends whether you want Foul Tongue or not in your deck. And Josh might leave it in as a hedge. Because it's hard to... You can tell what they're playing Esper Dragons when they play Dutch Tide. It's indisputable at that point. Yep. You can't really prove a negative as easily. So when they're playing straight blue-black, there's even no Ashiok? one... Even Ashiok. The Temple of Malady probably... Right. Probably gives it up a little bit. But there aren't very many cards you can play that will just prove that your opponent's on straight blue-black. I mean, Esper Dragons doesn't tend to have Ashiok's main. And Tom's kind of going to have to play that. He has to win the game somehow. Yeah, Josh doesn't have a reason to concede. It's not like he's showing Tom more, because Tom can already kind of guess what Josh is on. He's already played a Haven of the Spirit Dragon and Soulfire Grandmaster. Yeah, Nomad Outpost. I guess once you're getting... Once you're getting... Josh uh, might concede to an Ashiok activation. Right? Yeah, once you're getting Ashiok, you might just kind of hang it up here. 
Yep. Three cards enter the exile zone. Josh wants more info. I feel like Temple of Malady is a pretty big tell here. That is, you know, the it's, one white temple, one green temple is a very, very much Adrian Sullivan. Yeah. I mean, technically, from Josh's perspective, Tom might have a handful of blanks. It's the other reason not to concede. He's not the, actually dead. Dissolve is actually a, a tell, too. The Esper Dragon's deck is very infrequently going to play four Sylvangar Scorn, four Dissipate, or four Dissolve, and then also a Dissipate, rather. And Tom played a Dissipate right there. Yeah. So. Another Draconic Roar. Yeah. I don't know if Josh is literally 0%, but he's not much higher than that. I mean, what odds would it take to bet on him, right? Yeah. There's no way I'm betting on Josh at 1,000 to 1. <laughs> That's true. I like mean, Josh, Josh's outs involve Tom's, like, internet not working. That's like I, You know, I was about outs. to say, the big, the, this match, Josh's odds at a real at a tabletop tournament would be much higher because Tom could randomly get a game loss somehow. <laughs> That doesn't really happen on Magic Online, though. But I guess internet outages happen. So Tom's presumably going to let that resolve, then Bioblade it. Another chat points out, uh, actually, pretty well, that uh, Tom... Played Ojutai in match one, which makes it a lot less likely that Tom has Ojutai's left over for, for this deck. That's a good point. <clears throat> I mean, I guess you could split Ojutai's 2 2, but it doesn't sound right. Seems like at that point you do exactly what Tom's done, which is go for the Sullivan build. <clears throat> Tom's deciding now whether he wants to start. Minusing Ashiok, he can either put a dragon into play, but I think I'd rather mind twist Josh first. Because there's no way Josh doesn't just have a bunch of removal in his hand. Right. And the plan. Tom would have won a little faster live because he could just show Josh his hand of counterspell two removal spells, interpret the signs. Interpret Let's the signs. See. Let's see if Josh can interpret the signs here. <laughs> you just give him more information, so. Did Tom see three Ashioks? It was yeah. at least two. It had to be two. I guess it couldn't be three, but that was a lot of Ashioks. <laughs> yeah, Radiant Fountain. Is... At this point, Josh does know what Tom is playing, I think, without a, yep. without pretty much a doubt. So what do you think of Unified Constructed so far? I think it's interesting. I, I think deciding how to split up the different cards is is cool. I, I don't know what I would do specifically. I don't I don't love the Jeskai or Mardu decks right now, so I, I would hope to try to find a slightly different approach there. I could see like a deck like Mono Red being good. Mm. Like sure. Mono Red has some decent matchups, I guess. It depends on uh I mean, it depends on what you think the, the, the dominant strategies are going to be. So, I mean, both guys wound up with blue-black control plus green-red. Yeah. And those those make sense. So you try to figure out a deck that's good against, like, two of those decks, and then, you know, right. you might be in good shape. Right. And, I mean, those feel like the decks that have done the, the best in this standard anyway. Like, green-red devotion and Esper dragons in particular just feel like they've put up more results than almost anything else. Oh, well, there's Obzon. It's the third pillar, I guess. Yeah, the, and there might be a way to build Obzon and still have a, like, mono-red Obzon and something else, but, again, Obzon kind of impinges on both the red-green or white-green devotion deck and the blue-black control deck, so it's kind of hard to balance those things. Yeah. The question is, can, maybe you can build blue-black con blue black control or Esper control that shares black with Obzon. Like, if you split the Thoughtseize, split the Hero's Downfall, maybe you can actually get away with that? Yeah. And then I guess you just a... you just need your green-red deck to not need Coursers. 
Yeah. The problem is that Corsairs are good in all those green-red decks, so... Well, Tom's Dragon deck doesn't have them. Well, right? he, he has three. I'm sorry, so. did I just misremember that? Yeah, he's got three in his deck, so... You're right. Presumably that those decks... Oh, he doesn't all have Carry it. Right, right. That's what he doesn't have. He doesn't have... Uh, he doesn't have Carry it. So, here, at the very least, the good news for Josh is that size, sideboarding is... Uh, is is good for him. Like I was talking about before, when you play against a creatureless deck, you can oh, yeah. make make some good upgrades. So if we can take a look at Josh's list, we'll see exactly how good that is. And here we see, you know, Mastery of the Unseen. I guess he wishes he had more, but Outpost Siege is also quite good. Read the Bones, Duress, Thoughtseize. So... <laughs> Having access to all the hand disruption plus the more card advantage engines instead of the dead removal spells make it a fine matchup post board at least. To so just taking out removal, putting those in. Yeah, you pretty much could cut. I mean, crackling doom, draconic roar, wild slash, foul tongue, murderous cut. Like you've got <laughs> fourteen That's dead 14. removal spells. You can't put in everything from the sideboard because he doesn't want the ultimate price or the wild slash. So you're right. So, Some of that has to stay in. At that point, you probably leave in, like, the Wild Slashes. Maybe you could leave in Crackling Doom if you think that uh, Tom is going to sneak a creature to him. I would think Crackling Doom is the one you leave in first. Yeah, I guess the, the, the extra power level of it is worth it. See if Tom does even have a creature he can bring in. I guess Tom has Tassiger, which is not super uh, unsurprising. So, Yeah. Whereas Tom doesn't get as many upgrades. Again, like, Tom can bring in... Disdainful Stroke or Thoughtseize, but these are not cards that I'm like super excited about. Negate is fine. But we kind of saw this in the first yeah. matchup where Tom got to bring in a bunch of sideboard cards and lost the first game of versus control, but then won games two and three. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, Josh is hoping that'll repeat itself here. All right. It's best three out of five, so we've got at least one more match after this one. Maybe two more. Josh's hand looks slightly better this time. I especially like the part where it has seven cards. Well, that already is, is an advantage over last time, yes. And uh, well, it's a little slow. I mean, it's got three drop, three drop, five drop, six drop, and he was looking at a Thunderbreak region. But if you can one of those cards in, then, you know, any one of Josh's threats can end a game here. And Josh left Thunderbreak on top. He figured the fact that he was casting Robmaster on turn three and potentially on turn four means he'll he'll take the risk of, of missing his, his fourth land drop here. Because if, even if he misses his fourth land drop, he's still going to just cast another Rabble. Mm -hmm. What should uh, Tom take with his Thoughtseize? Probably a Rabble Master. Even though you have... Bought, even though you have Bioblight, it's still pretty annoying to get rabbled here. And Josh is going to be pretty happy. He's, he gets to get a Goblin token out of this. So even though Tom, and it also means that Tom has to lend like main phase user removal spells, so he can't keep a counter spell up because you don't really want Rabble making a second token. Yeah, the fact that all three of Tom's lands, colored lands anyway, come into play tap meant that he had no way to leave up a removal spell for that Rabble Master. He had to hope Thoughtseize was good enough, and it just and, wasn't. Usually it is, but yeah, in this case it, it was not. So now Josh did draw the lands, so he's casting Thunderbreak here. It doesn't Three. matter whether he casts it first or, or second. Like It doesn't change Tom's play. No reason for Josh to give him that information, though, is there? No, not, there, there, there isn't strictly, but nothing Tom can do will change Josh's play, and nothing Josh will do will really change Tom's play. It's kind of funny. It is better to just go to your attack before even playing your land, but the thing is, Tom already knows about the Thunderbreak, so just the land was the was the, the surprise. There is the Thunderbreak, and Tom being on the draw with a bunch of land that comes into play tapped has not really worked out for him. Yeah, so now Tom gets to have Dissolve and Downfall up. Josh is just going to play a Storm Breath, and go to his attack. Tom's going to either dissolve the Storm Breath, probably dissolve the Storm Breath, take 5 down to 16, then next turn downfall, you know, set up downfall in the region. Though Tom knows about Elspeth, and once Josh plays that fifth land, he is threatening to go land number 6 Elspeth next turn. 
But I don't think you can let Storm Breath Resolve. The problem is if you let Storm Breath Resolve, you're going to downfall and take three off the Storm Breath. Like that doesn't, off the Thunder Break, even when you target Storm Breath, that seems pretty bad. Yeah, so here's Storm Breath. Tom is going for Dissolve. He'll downfall later. Put an Ashok or a Liliana on the bottom for sure. Yeah. Liliana. Yeah. Not what he needs right here. Yeah, yeah, Liliana can't be good enough. Like, you can't just play Liliana into five power here. And Tom also wants to hit eight mana for Ugin because it's, he's going to need to this game. Mm -hmm. Dissolve this, or dissipate's kind of interesting. So now Josh is going to attack first. Tom's going to have to decide whether to leave up dissipate for a potential Elspeth. He knows Josh has two unknowns plus Elspeth. So he, if Josh has drawn another untapped land, which would make the third in a row here, or third out of like five draw steps. So yeah, Tom is going to take the damage, which Josh has to be pretty happy about, because now he plays the Mastery, which wasn't even his best spell. I mean, he can't play the Elspeth, but he gets to play the Mastery, which that then forces Tom to probably counter it and not be able to cast Hero's Downfall yet. Yeah, he has to counter that. This is the very card Tom used to beat Josh, and the uh, yeah. Josh had the control side. So now Tom goes to seven here and Push hopes that... Ankle stroke to the bottom. Well, if Josh plays Elspeth this turn, Tom really cannot afford to play stroke. Well, Storm Breath is quite oh, good. Geez. That was better than drawing a land. That is for sure. It's funny that Josh slightly hinted at having Crackling Doom by tapping his Haven last turn <laughs> and leaving up white, black, red. I don't know if Tom will pick up on it because it's pretty subtle, but it is funny that I think Josh did think about that. So now you kill the Thunderbreak. Yep. Oh, we no, just killed that. That means that's, that he can't draw another removal spell to kill Thunderbreak here. Yeah, actually, he's, he's kill Thunderbreak. Yeah. I think you had to there, but either way, Tom is dead now. Yep. Looks at some more cards with Ashiok and... That'll do it. Josh didn't even really draw sideboard cards. He just drew Rabble Master, Rabble Master, Thunder Break, Storm Breath, Storm Breath, and just Tom couldn't answer all the spells. <laughs> there was one Mastery in there. That's true. He did draw the Mastery that Tom did have to counter. But it was also like, he had five mana. He could have drawn anything. Yeah. Just about any business spell. Well, it was a lot better than the random removal spell that's in its spot in the sideboard right now, that's for sure. Yeah, let's just put it that way. Yeah. So we get a game three. Playing so far, playing out the same way our first match did with the Adex, where uh, Josh was on the control side, got game one, but once Tom was able to get all the crappy removal spells out of his main deck, Tom was able to win the second two, second two games. Josh hoping he gets to return the favor. One of these guys will take a 2-1 lead before we go to the free choice portion of our festivities. <laughs> where they... You know, you decide whether you want to play Red Green Devotion or uh, the Control deck, or potentially just like the your White Red deck, which was either Mardu or Jesti, which I think is a third place deck in terms of power level. So it'll be interesting to see how often they they choose to 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 run that deck because of a perceived good matchup. Interesting. Now, when you're when you're in a situation like that, I don't know if you had the chance. To, how many tournaments you had a chance to play that work this way? But is it does it matter what you've already won with? Is that enter into your decision making? No, presumably, presumably you know kind of what what each deck's strengths and weaknesses are, and uh -oh. whether you want to match or not. Cards. Six one on the draw with one, a scry land and a thought seize is like plausible, but it's pretty bad still. His hand is he goes to five, so, and I think he might go to four again. No, this five is probably worth keeping. It's not um, as good as the six was though, right? No, I don't think so. The six was a scry lane, whereas this is a bloodstained mire, and this draw has a stupid crackling doom in it. And we may see Tom's control deck break serve. On the play, plenty of land, a couple of counters, a removal spell. And even if Josh does draw the third land, with Tom on the play, he gets to counter this uh well. Counter the first Rabble Master. Oh, that's it. I thought Miss Solva a dig through time for Tom, not a second counter. Well, Josh gets to play Soulfire Grandmaster, which does actually 
at least force Tom to do something. He doesn't want to just take two over and over again. Tom drew some nice fetch lands. Those fetch lands plus the dig and murder cut is pretty nice. So you can go ahead and dissolve the Grandmaster. Josh has the kind of hand that can win. Yeah. No, we talk about Mana Screw beats Mana Flood as long as you get to the point where you can cast your spells. Yeah. Not that Tom is Mana Flooded yet, but... Does have more lands than spells. Oh, Wild Blade helped. Land number three. All right, game on. Yeah, so now Josh gets to go Rabble Master. Tom kills the first one. Rabble Master, Tom kills the second one. Rabble Master... Tom probably digs through and kills a third one, but still, it's at least something you got a chance. Drown. Yeah, that's a good answer to Rebels. Kind of like Hardcast Murderous Cut here. It looks like Tom's just going to plan on casting Drown. He's going to cast Dig for five plus three cards in the graveyard, and then untap and cast drown. Though I guess Murder's Cut, actually, no, that, Tom's probably right here. T T Josh is just playing a dragon deck. You just you need to save your Murder's Cuts. Here is Dig Through Time. Chase's Ingenuity, Hero's Downfall, some land. A Crux. Another Downfall. Bioblight and Island are the top two cards. They're all good, right? Do you take removal plus card drawing here? I have a hard time not taking Ingenuity, but I guess if you have... But you're not you in this story. You're somebody else. Right, right, right. <laughs> if you have Ugin, taking land and removal spell makes... This is the one of the more likely paths to cast Ugin, but... Only problem I have with this is that you don't. I don't know. I kind of like drawing three if I'm going to cast Ugin. I also just like drawing three if I'm not. But yeah, he drowns and then scries another drown to the top. I believe that's what just happened. He's got murderous cut up, which Josh is going to make him use on another rabble master. Well, Tom has drown. Oh, he has on the drown. Top on top. Yeah. 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 Okay. Tom's just going to take the one and then play the other drown. Josh scries a try land to the bottom. Yeah, Josh does not need to draw lands at this point. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Josh. He's got to beat an Ashiok and two removal spells with two thunder breaks, and that's not even counting the Ugin, which Josh gets or Tom gets to play if he draws two lands here. Mm-hmm. Cool gun is not bad. Tom can actually just put a cold gun into play if he really wants to. Well, I guess if he's casting downfall first, he he might not be able to. Kind of like redirecting to Ashiok here. That is what Josh has done. At this point, Tom is happy with another land or happy with a blue spell. Black spells are not quite as interesting to him, but he could take them. So Josh deciding whether he wants to play Thunderbreak or Kulagon here. Dashing. You're gonna you're gonna dash it if you if you do play it. And then get, it gets murderous cut. And then Tom untaps. And again, if Tom draws a land and play at Ugin, then I, Josh does not have an easy answer to Ugin. Taking a look at his deck list again. Comes in a play tap land for Tom Ross. So no Ugin yet. Josh somehow needed to fade Tom drawing either a land or a spell. That is a tough sweat. Yeah. And. Thunderbreak is just not going to do the trick. Uh -uh. And Josh also happened to draw Crackling Doom, which is uh, not the best. Mm. 
Now, how does does Tom minus the Ugin to take care of Thunderbreak? And if so, I guess he'll you can what put a creature into play with Ashiok because you lose your Ashiok to that line. Still, problem. You lose, the problem is you can put a creature into play with Ashiok, but then and then play an Ugin and plus Ugin. You could have like put Kologon Storm Fury into play, play Ugin plus Ugin, pass just like shooting Josh, mm. and then. You have an Ugin on 9 and a 4-5 to block. Because the funny thing is Tom's got to assume that Josh doesn't have a ton of ways to kill a 4-5 flyer because Tom has no creatures in his deck. Josh just randomly has Crackling Doom. I mean, it's hard to sideboard out 14 cards. Yeah, as it turns out. I mean, you could also go Kuligan, Ugin, and Ugin for minus 4. I guess there's no good reason to kill the Thunderbreak if you're playing Kuligan. Yeah, I, I, that actually might be better. It's... It feels it's, safer somehow. It's, it is safer because you, the Ugin on nine means that it's pretty hard for you to lose Ugin even if you, even if Josh does kill your Thunderbreak. But you might as well just snipe the Thunderbreak in case Josh has like Hero's Downfall or something. Though you can kind of assume there aren't that many running around given that Josh played an Esper deck earlier. Sure. Well, he is definitely going to minus the Ashiok. Yeah, it looks like Kolagon's coming into play. And here is Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Looking pretty well positioned. Okay, he's going to plus. So he domes Josh, adds some loyalty to Ugin, plays the last land out of his hand. So no cards in hand for Tom Ross. His board just is what his board is. And that Crackling Doom is randomly super sweet here. It, it even You can even kill Ashiok with it, right? Well, you have to deal the damage to the oh, to player the okay. to, to get the Kraken Doom's effect. I, I'm pretty... Let's take a look. Two to each opponent and oh, each... Oh, I see. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't. So, Josh... In, actually, what I think Josh wants to do is deal two to Ugin down to seven and attack Ugin down to three. You don't need to... You just ignore the Ashiok at this point. Sure. Yeah, that works out. And then Ugin can't minus to kill the Thunderbreak. Right. And then and Ashiok has to go up. So you get to kill your choice of Planeswalkers next turn. Well, the Thunderbreak, the Ugin gets to go back up to five. Yeah, okay. You can either kill Ashiok or keep Ugin low. Oh, but Hero's Downfall is going to mess up all our fun. So Tom better not Hero's Downfall before using Ugin. Otherwise, <laughs> he's, he's going to be in trouble here. Yeah, he... Uh, Okay. Both Planeswalkers go up. Well, th that was the card Josh needed to draw. How? How is Josh still in this game? Yeah, this is... Josh is getting incredibly lucky. This game is awesome. So Josh now gets to play Storm Breath. He gets to attack. <clears throat> Presumably Tom lets him attack first because Josh might not attack Ugin with the right card. Because you're likely going to be downfalling the storm breath the question is who attacks where i guess you can put storm breath on ashiok and thunderbreak on ugin or something like that or you can just put them both on ugin just to be safe all right storm yeah, breath that, they're both on ugin right now yeah i like that and if you're going to downfall you might as well do it now because this way uh josh has to redirect the three to ugin if he wants to kill it So Ugin gets redirected down to two. Ashiok still can't put anything great into play. He can put a Seeker into play. Yeah. And somehow Josh is up a dragon versus an empty-handed Tom Ross who's down to just Ashiok. Is that the board here? It's Ashiok versus a dragon and a Seeker in hand. Tom still has a lot of cards that he could draw that would just like be very, very, very good. Just A removal spell is pretty good because Tom's still at 20. And a card draw spell would almost end the game. But what a crazy game! Yeah, I still like Tom putting Kolagon into play. You can't read Josh for having a random yeah, yeah, crackling yeah. doom post board in his hand. Oh. I think that is that is pretty. I think that is pretty unrealistic. Yeah, no, Tom's played it fine. It's just. <laughs> 
I think Josh chose the right removal spell to keep in his deck, and it has worked out beautifully. So it looks he, like he killed Ashiok, not Ugin. I guess he figures he can get Ugin next turn, except Tom Top decks a hero's downfall. But he still gets Ugin. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Oh my goodness, he does still get Ugin. Because Tom ended up killing Stormbreath because it was presumably the bigger threat overall. Wow. Yeah, so Josh chose to kill Ashiok instead of Ugin last turn. Figuring he could clean up, and now he does get to... He gets the Ugin and the Hero's Downfall for the Sunderbreak region. So it's Seeker and a Crackling Doom against... I still think Tom's ahead here. On 20 life, there's just so many cards Tom could draw. But if Josh draws another like cheap threat here, then like because Tom drew a disdainful oh. Tom. <laughs> That <laughs> is pretty funny. Canceling each other out very excitingly. Josh probably got... Very excited to do that storm breath. Oh, yeah. I got excited. Tom, I could see the disdainful stroke. And then, so now Tom is on 18, but still, Josh is attacking for two a turn. Yeah. Got to th gotta think Tom's in okay shape here. Now, there's, now they're at nothing. Yeah. So what Josh needs to do is draw, like, out procedure Elspeth. Both those would be fantastic right here. So Tom is just going to take some damage here off of this uh, Seeker. He's not too worried. Tassiger is the draw phase. That goes straight <laughs> to the top. Except Josh has another Crackling Doom in hand. <laughs> this is just too much. <laughs> this is... <laughs> yeah, Maybe we'll get a... to activate Tassiger. Maybe even twice. This is a slug crest. Oh. Do you think with the rest here? I actually don't like casting Duress here. It's just so likely that Tom has nothing. Yeah. You just wait until you're trying to clear a path for a real spell. Yeah. You want to go, like, Duress into Dragon. Sounds right. All right. Tom has seen enough of this stupid secret away. Bio Blight will dispatch it. <laughs> There's the Tassiger. So Tom is going to be up two Tasker activations to Josh's Duress. Uh, yeah, I still, I still got to, I still got to think Tom's the favorite here. Two, two Tassiger activations is slightly better than a duress, slightly better than a duress and a draw step because Josh does get a draw step, but I don't know. All right, Tassiger X out a bunch of stuff. What's left? The Ugin, cut, downfall, dig, dig dissolve, and. Yeah, Josh goes for the Crackling Doom, so he's going to force Tom to spend all his mana now. And Josh does get to at least arrest one of these cards. Right. All right, I'm guessing that Tom is not... Josh is not going to give Tom the Dissolve here. No. That's, that's my What he's point. hoping is, is Tom flips, yeah, something like a Drown and Sorrow. Drown? Sure. Because that doesn't kill very many things of Josh's, and he, he, you know, he can play around it pretty easily. Second Tassiger activation. Flip, flip. Island and a counter spell. So now you give Tom, like, you know, Murderous Cut or something like that, and then you Murderous have Dissolve. I think he can cast. Well, I mean, you're going to duress whatever, right? Whatever you give him here, you're duressing. You're assuming you're duressing anything you give Tom. The question is, is there something you could give him that you wouldn't want to duress? And that's why, like, Murderous Cut or Hero's Downfall seems like a potential thing that you might not care about. Enough. It did in fact give him the murderous cut. Now that Crackling Doom finally resolves, Tassiger dies. <laughs> wow! That, that's like the perfect card, because now you know Tom's hand is two removal spells, you just get to play out post siege. <laughs> the comebacks from Josh Utter late in these last two weeks have been absurd. The other match was more impressive because Josh really had to hit all the tools. He had to figure out how to play his way out of it. This match sure. is, is no less entertaining, but it is more like Josh just like every turn like, yep, I just, you know, do the card I needed. <laughs> sure. Still. No, it, it's, it's been awesome how it's worked out. All right. No bad outpost is the card from the siege. You still just sit on your duress, right? Yeah, for sure. Turns out Tom did draw a Dissolve, but 
Tom can't be that happy with just like a bunch of Elspeth. Yeah. So now you cast her as Tom does all. Of it. Then yep. you cast Elspeth, and yeah, you're in great shape. Tom or Josh also drew a Haven this turn, so his Storm Breath's coming back too. Tom is going to dissolve the duress because there's no reason to let Josh see what else is in his hand. And he gets the scry. Ashiok is the scry card. Which, top? Tom might be thinking top because Josh has only got 20 cards left in his deck. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good way to fight Outpost Siege. But as it turns out, Josh... But he knows Josh is going to play an Elspeth this turn. And I guess he can actually stop the Elspeth from killing the Ashiok for a little while with, like... Drown and Freakas Cure and Murder's Cut. He's got Murder's Cut for the Storm Breath. Yeah, Tom might be able to mill Josh out here. Well, here's the Elspeth. We know it's going to resolve. Now Josh knows it's going to resolve. Three tokens. And, oh, by the way, Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Now Tom just has to start killing these tokens. I think he put Ashiok on top, right? Yeah, Ashiok's actually quite good here. Josh is getting milled for, you know, if with Ashiok, five cards a turn. That's not very many turns. Like, he can actually mill Josh out fairly easily here. Crazy. Because, you know, remember, Ashiok did a little work earlier. Josh is only on, like, 23 cards in his deck. This game's awesome. Drowned is going to go ahead and take away those three tokens. He's a scry land, which he's going to shove to the bottom. This way Ashiok survives. Read the Bones is the outpost siege card. Oh, by the way, there's a storm breath dragon. That's, that was his draw step? Yeah, that was his draw step. Read the bones, right. not really what you want when you're getting milled out. Uh-uh. And he knows about the murderous cut. He does not know about Farika's cure, but, but Josh does know about the murderous cut. He does. He's going to go ahead and cast Read the Bones. Looking for a duress or a thought seize here, because then he can go... Mastery and a fetch land. <laughs> Mastery of the Unseen, also not great when you're getting decked. Ravel Master is what he keeps. Or what he comes up with Ravel Master Scry off of a... Uh, Fresh library. How much mana? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He cannot go Storm Breath and Rabble Master. He can play Scryland, which is anything he leaves on top. You get the Ashiok mind game. If you leave a bad card on top, so the Ashiok, well, whatever. Yeah, presumably. Anyway. In Josh is considering. Waiting a turn on Haven back Thunderbreak region, but I think you just play Storm Breath. You know it's going to get Murderous Cut, and you don't have that many turns. You just have to like yeah. start this grinding. Clears, this through. clears a path for next turn Storm Breath. Yeah. yeah Ashak was actually the the one card that Tom could really take over the game with. Like if Tom had a Perilous Vault or Tom drew a card draw spell, he was in like decent shape. But Ashiok is just an active threat here. Storm Breath attacks. Is he attacking Ashiok or Tom? Presumably Ashiok, yeah. Tom just has to kill this, right? The question is, do you want to... I think you actually just is better to delve here, because... Oh, no, he only has the one task here, so it doesn't actually matter, so... You might as well pay, pay a few mana while you're at it. I think he's leaving up Farika's Cure to get one of the tokens, maybe? Yeah, or at least have the option to. Oh, he's also bluffing Dissolve, isn't he? Yeah, he's representing a counterspell there. Elspeth ticks up. I feel like Tom's like one action spell. Yeah, Dissipate will probably be it. Away from being able to to just win with Ashiok. He might not have even needed it, but it, I think Dissipate... I think he I mean, was Josh... going to Those tokens were going to add up pretty quick. 
True. Josh needs to like thing. rattle off duress here. Thunderbreak Regent. Yeah, Thunderbreak is the siege card. Crackling Doom is the draw step. Huh. Now so what? Josh is one one short of havening back Storm Breath and playing Thunderbreak. And playing Storm Breath. Does that mean you sub in Rabble Master for one of those? Yeah. Well, Tom actually is going to mill Josh. Yeah, Josh might actually... People are saying that Josh might actually win with Elspeth Ultimate. I guess if Tom doesn't draw anything... At this point, I think you just attack Tom. Sure. And then just, maybe you go Rabble Master attack... Or you have to play Thunderbreak this turn, so you're just going to do that. Yep. You could six mana. Ha haven back. You could play Thunderbreak, then Haven back Thunderbreak, and play two Thunderbreaks this turn. But I think you go Rabble Master. Tom is likely gonna Farika's cure it because he's yep. gonna. He, he knows that the Thunderbreak's coming out. Wow. Interesting. So I guess he just really wants to kill one of those tokens. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, so Tom needs to draw a way to kill this Elspeth, otherwise Josh just attacks Tom down to 9, makes more tokens, plays a Thunder Break, and then next turn goes ultimate. So Tom, Tom ends up at 12 still. Yep. But the ultimate plus the Thunder Break is still enough. Does it change much if he hits the Rabble Master with the Cure and counters Thunder Break? So he takes... One more damage, he's at 11. I mean, I guess either way he's dead to Elspeth Ultimate. Yes. So, I'm not sure. I don't think there's an advantage to to doing that, but I think it makes... It doesn't cha ultimately change things. Curious. Thunderbreak. All right, Tom Ross needs a draw phase. <sighs> Radiant Fountain is not going to get the job done. No, will not. Elspeth Ultimate. Josh Aaron Layton has 10 cards in his library. Ashiok can drop him to 8. Outpost Siege and Draw Step drops him to 6. He's got one turn to spare, but it looks like Josh Aaron Layton is actually going to get it done. Wow. Ashiok came so close to winning this game for Tom Ross. Yeah, very close, and turns out... I don't know what chances Josh could have had to win this game, but they were not big against an Ugin and a bunch of other nonsense. These crackling dooms ended up just being insane. Yeah. Tom played it well. I I'm impressed with the way Tom has played this match, but <sighs> Tom probably played it better than Josh did, only because Josh didn't really have decisions to make. Not that he did anything wrong. His deck just said, here, perfect cards for you, sir. I mean, I think they both used the cards they had at their disposal. Tom didn't play around removal yeah. spells. It's possible that Tom wanted to go deeper in playing around Josh's last card being a removal spell, given mm. how hard it is to board out all your removal. If he had done that and, like, minus the Ugin the first time when it was Thunderbreak versus Kologon, yep. then I think Tom would have been in better shape. But Josh did draw a lot of Storm Breath, so it might, he might have still won. Crazy game. Crazy awesome game. Josh Utter Layton wins. He wins match three. He takes a two matches to one lead in the overall set. Yeah, that's okay. uh, that was a, that was an interesting match. I did not expect that to, to go to go that way. We did see the control deck after the creature deck gets to sideboard out all the removal spells, losing both sideboard again. So that narrative played out, but the details were a lot more complicated. All right, super quick break. Uh, we will be right back momentarily with the fourth match, the one where the players have to decide which of their three unified standard decks they want to bring to the table. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Getting ready for match four here. T tell everybody what you were doing on the break. So <laughs> a couple days ago, I was, uh, you know, looking out for Paul Cheon's best interest and registered paulcheon.com just to make sure no one, you know, malicious could get their hands on it. Uh, for, for the time being, it redirects to my Wikipedia page, though, because, you know, that's just when you Google Paul Cheon, that's what you get. I found out today that he registered LuisScottVargas.com, and it actually links to his Twitch channel. <laughs> you registered PaulCheon.com and didn't <laughs> defend yourself? I, I registered ScottVargas.com because it's shorter, but I did not register my full name. I was too lazy. I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> so I guess turnabout's fair play, but I don't know. It feels like, feels like Paul's doing something wrong. I wonder if I, I can pursue some kind of action against him. <laughs> How do you not register LucasCatVargas.com <laughs> if you're going to play that game? I was trying to do Paul a favor. He turns around and uses it to, pr to promote his <laughs> Twitch channel. <laughs> Good stuff. So. Good. All right. So, match four. What would you do? You're Josh Under Layton. You've got Esper, Devotion, and uh, Mardu Dragons. I would not play Devotion because it's really bad against Blue Black. Like, it's actually one of the worst matchups of all the like matchup pairs. Yep. Uh, and you said you earlier really, you thought Mardu was just underpowered. Yeah. I would probably play Esper if I were Josh. He also just made a bunch of money at the Pro Tour with it, right? For whatever that's worth. Okay, now you're Tom Ross. You've got an, a Jeskai deck, blue-black creatureless control, and dra green-red dragons. I don't mind blue black in general. I think blue black's a good choice for Tom. Um, I would I would be leaning towards playing blue black. I would. I mean, maybe if you think Jess if you think Jess guy has a good uh, Esper matchup, then I could see playing Jess guy. But I wouldn't play Red Green Dragons because I think it's got multiple bad matchups. I would probably play blue black if I were Tom, but that's probably not a huge surprise. Right, you would play blue black, but you're Tom Ross in this hypothetical. Yeah, so I think that's where you end up. But uh, basically, I wouldn't play the devotion, or the, sorry, the, I would not play the red green decks if I were either of them. I think that yep. those decks are, they both just have a really, like, Tom's red green deck is bad against Josh's red green deck and is bad against Josh's control deck, I think. At least isn't the best against it. So I think that both of them have too bad of a matchup when they play red green to risk it. Okay. So you'd go blue black. I don't know. Tom seems like the kind of guy who would play Jess guy. It just seems like he's such a such a good sort of aggro tempo player, or at least that's where many of his results are. I mean, I think he's been playing great the whole season, um, but I feel like that's just where so much of his success has been historically. That uh, seems like the kind of guy who would feel more comfortable with a Jess guy list in his hand. Yeah, and as it turns out, that's that's where they kind of ended up. Right? Josh is on the control deck that he's comfortable with, and Tom is on the Jess guy deck that he's comfortable with. That's that what works. it sounds like. That makes sense. Yeah, let's get down to the match. Awesome. Owen Turtenwald waits in the wings for the winner of this. Next week, we will run back the same format. Unified standard, both players bringing three decks to the table for a best three out of five matches set up. We're currently in match number four of this week's semifinal. Josh Utter Layton won a crazy game three in that last match. So he's up two matches to one. If Josh can win one more match, he gets to go to the finals. All right. So if it is Jess Guy versus Esper, you think you, I mean, if you said if you're Tom, you're only playing the Jess Guy deck if you believe it to have a good matchup against Esper. Yeah. And, and, and I think. Presumably he does. He's got main deck Stratus Dancers. He's got more instant speed interaction. I do think the match when they actually played was quite close, so I think yeah. it's, you know, I, I couldn't point to who has an advantage either way. Yeah, this is in fact a, just a rematch of the first match watched, which is the one match Tom has won so far. <laughs> Indeed. Like you say, though, super, super close. Tom got him for exaxes at the end of game three, and... It really felt like if Josh had one more point of life, he would have been able to untap and take over with an Ojitai. Now, do you keep Thought C scoring five lands? You oh, do, yeah. right? Multiple Scry lands. You're also on the play, so you can go 
Turn on Skyland, turn two, Thoughtseize Skyland, turn three, Skyland leaves Scorn up. And, and you know Tom isn't playing a deck that has that many early drops. Like Tom says, mostly three is, is where his like cards really start to click. So Sure. It means that Sylvagar Scorn is decent against him. And Well, he didn't know that. Like, oh, that's true. Decision without no I mean, I would keep that hand on the play in the dark for sure. I mean, it's great against Blue Black. It's solid against Dragons, and it's solid against Jeskai. Like, overall, I think this is a, a pretty decent hand. Now what? Thoughtseize and Scryland, or are you leaving up Selengar Scorn? I would have tended towards Thoughtseize, but I guess you don't really want to Thoughtseize a two drop, and he's got a bunch of drops. He's got Grandmasters. Yeah. He often plays the Stratus Dancers at Vulcan turns. Especially in this matchup. Well, it's whatever's curve says. They're good face down in this matchup, too, for sure. Yeah, All right. Here, I'd, I'd much rather lead with a Soul Fire because you care about it less if you want to play Stratus on three. So, Force Spike does its job. Now, Josh should just leave up Dissolve if this is the way he's playing yeah. it, right? Certainly. Josh has drawn a lot of land so far. This hasn't gone incredibly well for him. Josh is going to dissolve whatever this is. Well, he's drawn one land, one spell. Yeah. He's only had three turns. So here's the dissolve on the Rattle Master. Gets a scry. Comes up with a dig through time. Which is perfect because Josh can cast Thoughtsies and then crack a fetch and then cast dig through time. Mm, that does work out. Yeah. The question is, do you take Ojatai or do you take Stratus Dancer? It's funny because Stratus Dancer gets played earlier, so there's definitely an inclination to do that. You're going to be able to dig into removal, most likely. So, But if you take Ojatai and then Tom plays face down Stratus Dancer, you frequently are going to be able to dig into like Bioblight or Hero's Downfall or Foul Tongue. He takes the Stratus Dancer. Doesn't this does strand, to, yeah. This does strand Tom without to a play twice. for a few turns. <laughs> also, I guess if you took Ojatai and then Tom goes land go land Stratus Dancer with two up, that is a little a little bit. All right, here's the dig through time. Downfall land Haven. What's he looking for here? More counters, more removal, a way to stop Bojutai at the very least. Yeah, so I think good thought season counters are probably better than removal. Oh, Foul Tongue. That is the right that, removal spell for Ojutai. Yeah, Foul Tongue is not bad. This overall is like a kind of weak dig if he's getting Foul Tongue Heroes downfall off of it. Basically, you're looking for more blue cards here because you have a couple turns off. What you're hoping is that Tom doesn't untap and just like, draw Rabble Master. That would be problematic. He does get Foul Tongue Downfall. That's a pretty good draw for Tom. He can't cast it yet, but Dig just in general, especially since Josh is kind of on air here. Or, or on Ojutai. He's going to top deck Ojutai. The good thing for Tom, though, is that Tom gets to untap, plays fourth land tap, pass, end of draft return, Dig, and... Uh, you know, it's just like a good sequence of plays for him. Valor Stance is actually very relevant here because it can kill Raptor's Ojutai, and it can even protect Tom's Ojutai if Josh ends up using a downfall. Though Josh likely will lead with the battle turn. All right. Josh saw Tom's hand a couple of turns ago. Feels fairly secure in just tapping out for Ojutai here. He's just going to respond with the dig. He can't actually leave up enough mana to do anything relevant, right? No, it's not clear to me why Tom wants to respond here, because it it doesn't matter a lot. I mean, Yeah, it doesn't actually matter. Jo like but Josh, he's going to get to scry here. I guess now he gets to scry knowing Tom's casting dig. This is this like uh, the bad habit to make sure you don't accidentally misclick through your opponent's end step? I do that yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I sometimes run, run stuff along those lines. Now, what is Tom hoping for, for with this dig? 
probably not a Horling Outburst. <laughs> I, the, wow. the, the advantage to Horling Outburst is that Tom can play it to protect his Ochai against Balton. That, that, that'd be a pretty cool play if he did that. He came up with a land and a Horling Outburst. That does not sound like Ooh. the most exciting dig. That was not a good dig, no. Land? Land's like last on his list. Well, the one good thing about land, actually, land does make a little sense, is now Tom can go stoke your Ojatai, Balor stands your Ojatai. Mm. But <laughs> Josh just drew... Bile Blight on the top? That's going to work out all right for Tom still, though. Tom's actually not not crushed here, because Josh does get to attack, and then Tom just goes Valorous stance. Sure. Yeah, Tom was hoping... Tom was prepared to kill Ojutai twice with the Stoke and the Valorous stance, but it turns out once is going to be good enough. Josh is on removal spells. That's all he found with his dig. Yeah, this is this is anyone's game. I I do believe the blue-black deck's ahead in, in situations like this, because it has more powerful cards to draw. But... Uh, Tom is still, yeah, he's still very, very alive. I don't actually know if I would have sacked the fetch there. Assuming Tom's dig cards are bad, you thinned out one land, but you shuffled back five cards you didn't want with dig through time. It's fair. Lightning strike hits for the bottom. Tom's almost to a 15 or 16 burn. He's halfway there. But he's not quite quite yet. Josh can. Josh does have a few turns, you know, a few cards that he could draw. That you know, he's right now. Josh isn't doing anything. So, I was not what Josh wanted to draw. Mystic Monastery, not what Tom wants to draw. Both players thought they could land. More lands. Wow, they've had a couple of these sequences tonight where, just like the first guy to draw business is probably going to win. Food. Raptor drawing the crucial dismal backwater to get out of quad stoke <laughs> range. All right, business spell. Josh is going to use his downfall. Yep. This is super close, though. Like Again, yeah. when, when both players don't have much, the first person to, to draw something usually just explodes out of the gates because at this point, you know, an unanswered card will end the game very quickly, whether it's a dig through time or a threat or an Ojutai, you know, any of those things. Well, there's Ojutai. Uh, it, is the one, it is on the side that's facing down Stoke the Flames, so... Yeah. Yeah, Tom's Ojutai is better on this board. Oh, Ravel Master. Do you play that, or do you... Versus an empty-handed Josh Hunter Layton, or do you wait? The advantage of playing it is that if you don't play it, and Josh draws a counter spell, he can counter it, but it doesn't exactly. do anything right now. Josh is certainly not going to attack here. He knows about the, the Stoke the Flames. He's going to wait till he draws a counter spell, in which case Tom can double Stoke it here. Josh knows about one Stoke, but not the other? He knows about just the one Stoke. He knew about Stoke Ojitai, where, where the cards. Oh, oh, that's a card. That's an Ugin. And Ugin can't even get double Stoked here. Nope. Yeah, I mean, drawing an 8-drop when you're both on top decking is usually pretty good. Who can just threaten to go ultimate in a few turns here? Tom's probably going to draw a lightning strike to, to triple bird the Ugin. <laughs> it's just enough land for that play. Tom not deciding actually whether he wants to stoke Ugin in a turn. There's some valid reasons to do that. For example... If Tom drew another Rabble Master, he might want to go Rabble Master, Rabble Master, attack Ugin for one, double stoke it. So he wants to stoke end of turn so that he can do both. Because I think he's, yeah, he's a little short if he doesn't. Yep. You probably don't need to stoke twice here. Just because you have enough mana to, to cast the other one. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, you, you get to this kill Ugin works. here. It's painful, but it works. Ojitai gets to pick off the Mantis Rider. And it means that Josh gets to attack with the Ojutai the next turn, but I don't know that you're getting better. I mean, you can't... Once Ugin goes up to 7, what exactly are you going to do? Yeah, I, I agree. He's priced into this. He's going to have to throw, what, three cards at Ugin? Yeah, he's going to end up turning Stoke, Stoke, Mantis Rider. 
He is going to be left with like Rabbit Master and a token at least. But versus an untapped Ojutai. And Josh even has a hero's downfall for the Rabble Master. And Josh is going to, yeah, get the, the Ojutai that Josh knows is safe to hit with. So Josh, I think, is reasonably far ahead here. He's going to get his draw step plus his anticipate off of Ojutai. Plus he's got an Ojutai or a downfall for the Rabble Master. So at the very least, it's Ojutai versus a Goblin token. And that's not even counting Josh's Oh, draws. I think Drew Time off the top. Yeah, I don't know if that was even needed, but it was certainly no. jo Josh won't turn it down. All right. No, Josh is way, way far ahead. He was already pretty far ahead. But, I mean, game one is the is the game where he's advantaged. He won game one the last time these two decks fared off and still managed to lose the match. I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity while Tom is tapped out and empty-handed. Get off the stig through time. Double Silumgar Scorn. Silumgar Scorn is the kind of card you just rack, once you rack up a couple copies, you feel completely safe. I certainly remember feeling that way when it was called Counterspell. Down goes Rattle Master. Stoke, almost a good card. Josh had in top deck to dig into two counter spells. This would be putting us almost back toward parity. Uh, it turns out dig, Tom's dig missed pretty hard. It looked like I didn't see exactly what he was he was yeah he was choosing from, but I don't think he needed to set up the hoarding outburst Valorous stand Stoke plan so badly that he would take those cards unless he had a, a good option. Yeah, but Josh has a removal spell, a counter spell, and an Ojutai that is able to attack freely. Tom's going to have to win the two sideboarded games if he wants to win this match this time. And he's going to have to do that if he wants to get, to get us to match number five. Yeah. Wow. It would be interesting to see what they pick if they go to another match, but again, we're two games away from that, that being, being a possibility. I bet they would just run this back. Like even if even if Tom wins this, I don't know. I guess Josh is O two in the matchup if that happens. But would his other decks even be better against this? Like this thing flies over a lot of what Devotion can do. I think. Yeah, I don't. I think that if Tom doesn't want the like. If he doesn't want the blue-black versus Esper matchup, then I'd see Jeskai makes the most sense to me. If Josh thinks he's like a better deck against Jeskai, he would run it, but I don't know if he does. Yeah, that's right. I don't think his Devotion deck's better. It's like, is Mardu Dragons good against Jeskai? It doesn't... I don't know quite how that plays. Anyway, Josh Hunter Layton now one game away from winning the semifinals. Yeah, well... Tom just needs to board in his Erish and Clerics, and then then he's going to be in pretty good shape, I assume. <laughs> we are going to see that again, aren't we? There's that. There's Josh's Pres list. Presumably, you know? I mean, they, they they've had time. They they don't have new information exactly, but if right. it if it ha if it came in last time, like why wouldn't it again? Yeah, we should look at uh, Tom's list because that's the one that actually gets to change significantly. Erish and Cleric came in last time. Master of the Unseen was the huge card, and Disdainful Stroke is obviously quite good in the matchup as well. Yeah. Like, how many cards does he need to take out? Mm, four lightning strike, and potentially some number of stoke the flames. He doesn't need. I mean, he wants to take those out. I don't know if he needs to take those out exactly. He doesn't have that many cards to take out that he would want. I don't know. The thing is, I think he wants mastery and disdainful stroke and negate and stratus dancer. So. Either he's like switching Valor, but he had two Valor stances, so he's not cutting those either. Maybe Soulfire Grandmaster, he likes more than Eric. It could be that he would rather have Erishan Cleric than Soulfire Grandmaster because of John and Sorrow. Wow. That's the only that's the only logic I can really come up with. 
Grandmaster is just never, ever going to buy back his spell in this matchup? Presumably not. It's, I mean, it is a possibility, but uh, it is, it is not, a, it's not a, a, like the sort of play that you make, you know, you hinge a lot on. And Josh does have drowns. I mean, that is a six card hand for Tom. There's a Battlefield Forge and a Ration Cleric off screen. We'll get that cleaned up for you, obviously. So it's a five card hand if you count a Ration Cleric. Okay. I say that you as don't you. Count a ration cleric. <laughs> As as it won game one, it's clearly not a misclick. Tom has chosen to do this. I mean, yeah, yeah. if it happened once, maybe whatever. But no, he's chosen to do this card, and you know, it, and it works. Makes sense. Well, see, like, look at Josh's hand right now. Cleric will not die to drown, but Josh doesn't need to drown it. And Tom's three is a card that doesn't also doesn't interact with drown. So. It, the, basically, the value you get off Cleric is if you play Cleric turn 2, Rabble Master turn 3, you're not vulnerable to Drown and Sorrow. That's, that's the main reason. Plus, it does a good job canceling out the damage you take from Battlefield Forge. So Battlefield Forge casting Irish and Cleric is kind of a combo. The life gain is crucial to this matchup, right? Yeah. So Josh, once again, choosing to keep Scorn up turn 2 instead of Thoughtseize with the additional bonus of getting to keep Anticipate Ups. You know, this is a combo. Hordling Outburst, Erishin Cleric, player on Drown and Sorrow. That, that does make sense. Now, do you go Hordling Outburst? Do you go Mantis right here? Mantis Rider is more aggressive. It only loses to Silumgar's Scorn. So it makes sense to play the Mantis Rider. The Josh does have the Scorn here. Though Josh playing Island turn 2 does, does kind of telegraph the Scorn just a little bit. A little bit. Certainly represents it. Now, thought seeds time. It's kind what of interesting think? to see what you take here because Hordling Operas is the only threat, but you do have a drown for it. So there's some merit to just like snapping off one of the Ojatize commands or even the Stainful Stroke because it does counter your, your Dragon Lord's prerogative, though hopefully you find a dragon by the time you want to cast it. Yeah, I don't think I'm taking Hordling Operas here. I think I take Ojatize command? It seems like the game's going to go that direction because... You, if you take other Chai's command, Tom's going to play Hordling Outburst. You then get to drown it. Cleric survives. Well, yeah. make sure to make sure to note that. And then Josh then gets asked to just play around one other Chai's command. And knowing about disdainful stroke is a lot a big part of the battle here. Right. He took the disdainful stroke. He just wants to make sure his Dragon Lord's prerogative resolves or whatever else, like dig through time, whatever else he draws. Brylands, he's Ojitai. Top or bottom that here? I would top Ojitai here. Well, there's Ojitai's command, which doesn't make sense that it counters Ojitai, but it does. But it does make your prerogative uncounterable. I think eventually you're going to want an Ojitai. Yeah. I didn't see what he actually did, but we'll find out this draw step. Yeah, top. I like it. Also, yeah. you, you have the bonus that if you cast around here, if Tom taps out for a threat, you can just play an Ojutai, and if he does not tap out for a threat, Island is interesting because do you want the land for Dragonlord's Prerogative? You probably do. It's not the most exciting, but it is fine. You do have Anticipate. You yeah, but... That way if you have to. But if you keep Take the land now, you can Anticipate into a spell. I'll buy that. So now Tom... Eric keeps chipping away. It's getting there. He still has Grandmaster in his deck, though, so it was that wasn't the swap. Well, I guess there were four Grandmasters and only two Erishan Clerics, so... He shaped something for it. So now that Tom taps out and, and Josh knows his hand is just two Ojutai's commands, Josh gets just to slam Ojutai. And this is just great for Josh. Because Ojutai as a defensive force is huge. Also the fact, again, that Josh just knows what Tom has. Josh could attack into Ojutai's command here without fear. Oh man, and he has not now a Silumgar score and an uncounterable Dragonlord's prerogative up. Wow. Yeah, this this is not going well for Tom. 
Starting to think Owen Turnwald may know who he's playing against next week. Owen and Raptor have probably played each other plenty over the years. They have, they have. So, I like attack with Lurch Tahiri. I mean, yeah. yeah, you get attack back for three and Tom gains some life, but just getting to draw an extra card is just so good. Mild sleep. Presumably past the turn, Tom at this point kind of has to cycle the Ojutai's command. It's just not doing anything otherwise, and he's got two in his hand. Sure. Has to take damage to do it, too. Gains four life, draws a card. Tom does get to gain a lot of life. Now that he's not chosen the Sulfar Grandmaster mode, Bile Blight can kill Sulfar Grandmaster. Oh, Mastery, does that have time to do anything? <laughs> not really. Um, I mean, he's just going to get Sylvangar scorned anyway. But. Presumably. Josh could think he can outrace it, but again, why, why introduce that risk factor? I think you're more likely to lose... Right. Uh, letting that resolve the not. He knows Tom's well, hand. Well, he now knows that Tom is exactly Ojutai's command and mastery. Now that he knows Tom's hand, I think that the mastery becomes a lot less of a threat here. So Tom might actually not even play. He might just pass. Josh gets to anticipate. Still with scorn up. I guess Tom's leaving up the ability to Ojutai's command, which is now better because he can get a Grandmaster. Does seem a little bit better than just mastery. Still, Josh has a counter spell for the next threat he cares about and has Dragon Lord's prerogative to reload. Oh, two counter spells. Yeah, you see, LWW, Josh may have lost the first matchup, which was this matchup, but with two match wins so far and up a game here. Ojutai attacking feels like we're just about done. Yeah, there's not a whole lot Tom can do to get out of don't, triple counterspell now, and Josh has, uh, he's, he's short of playing all three, but he still can just counter this Ojutai's command and then counter the next thing Tom plays, and then like that is almost game, unless Tom can draw it. If Tom can draw Erish and Cleric followed by Erish and Cleric, he could gain enough life. Well, he only sideboarded in two. Oh. Well... In that case, that's going to be tough. I, I think Tom is actually even farther behind than Josh was with that Mardu Dragons deck that he somehow made to come back with. Tom goes for Ojutai's command. Looks like that's going to get dissolved. Dig through time. Would be exciting if it wasn't for the two counter spells. And even then, Josh could potentially let the dig resolve and just counter whatever he plays next? Yeah, I mean, if Tom was on less than five, I'd buy that line, but not if, when you need two attacks, I don't think. Yeah. Agreed. So, Mastery's going to resolve. And he, Tom would be dead here if he didn't have that cleric. <laughs> He'd be at four. But now Josh knows that Tom's on... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no cards. Tom can technically manifest a Stratus Dancer to block with, but this is it, going to be tough. Orderly Outburst, not going to get it done. Josh Utter Layton is going through to the finals. Well, Clark's going to get his last hit in at least. Oh, and I guess technically he doesn't even have 
He only has one pain-free white mana. He can't even mastery into... Oh, mastery into Stratostancer is still alive. Sorry. One white he, mana. He Hypothetically... Needs- could he needs two life. Also, Josh has like millions of removal spells. Other than that, though. Besides all those things and the fact that that play doesn't win in the game, he's still in pretty good shape. <laughs> all right. Josh Taylor Layton wins. He wins three matches to one. Good for him. He made a, made a nice run. Spent most of the league just trying out brews. Decided to show up with a real deck in the last week. Won it. Wins the last playoff spot, and now here he is, all the way through to the finals. Now, I know that uh, Josh does not have a microphone, but he is randomly at your house, right? Because he's staying with you? He no longer is staying here, but he does not have internet in his new apartment. So every time the league rolls around, he he heads back over to play. <laughs> Got it. Okay. But uh, I can we can take a quick break. I can grab Josh, and you can interview him. Yeah, well, let's just put up the uh, let's put up the Super League slide. I'll remind people what our announcement was today while you go get Josh. Fair Sounds enough. Good. Cool. So we'll get a Josh out of late winner interview for you guys. Meanwhile, we announced this in the pregame yeah, yeah. show. There is going to be we've got the Super League figured out for yeah. the rest of the he year. Got, he got lucky when you're playing Mardu, but he got very lucky. Super League Championship is going, like, going to happen uh, in yeah, Battle for Zendikar yeah. standard. Yeah, but those so things happen. Then you're we're going to gonna build up to that with a Vintage <laughs> Super League. The odds of you winning the... After my mulligans, I agree that I got incredibly lucky. Well, the odds of you winning that Ugin game were like 2%. Anyway, right? <laughs> After the mulligan. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, you're mulligan. Are you, are you not... Do you not want to uh, sit here, too? No, no, no. It's just... <laughs> I know they can hear us. That's why I figured to listen to them. Or, or, the slide can speak for itself, right? Do I need the headphones? Or All right. No? So, oh. yes. The plan is Vintage Super League starting in two weeks... Three people from that will qualify for the Super League Championships. We'll do Standard uh, right after Pro Tour Origins. Uh, four people from that will qualify. And then we'll do Modern in the run-up to the Pro Tour Battle for Zendikar. After that Pro Tour, new fresh Modern, freshly rotated, and all that good stuff. All the winners get together for the Standard Format Super League Championship. Pretty happy with this plan. Mostly, I'm excited about getting to play Vintage starting in two weeks. Uh, I will be one of the eight competitors in the Vintage Super League. Actually here the thing we've been doing with VSL, where we'll just swap off commentary and playing. Uh, the gang's all here. These are the eight players that played both Season 1 and Season 2. It's how things worked out. Uh, Kai Buddha, still a member of the VSL, but had some uh, travel planned for July and didn't want to try to play from the road. So here's your competitors. Eric Froelich, trying to trying to win back-to-back seasons. Luis trying to make the trying to uh, put together a third deep run. Hey, oh, Randy. Trying to make it go. All right, sounds like we got Josh Edel Layton on the line. How's it going, Josh? Uh, going great. That seemed like uh, the matchup played out. Did now talk to me about uh, the decks that you chose and how you wound up with those three particular decks for Unified Standard. What was the thought process? Uh, the thought process was basically just what are the three best decks that I can play without over- overlapping cards. Okay. Uh, so, like, there's clearly going to be a cursor deck, there's clearly going to be a blue deck of some kind playing Dig Through Time, and then what what is the leftover deck? And I don't know, this was just three tier one decks that didn't overlap at all. I mean, the... the oh. Yeah, so the overlaps were, like, I had to shave split thought seasons and... Uh, Felt like vacations. It was just not a big deal at all. It was basically no concessions made to play in the three decks. No thought to trying to squeeze an Abzan deck in there somehow? <laughs> it, well, you can't play Abzan mid-range, which is like kind of the the like main difference between this and normal standard. That's basically just not a deck because it uses all the cards. It's your <laughs> cursor deck and your downfall deck. So okay. it just eats up like two of the tier one like sets of cards, basically. Um, you can definitely play Abzan Aggro, though. Okay. I'll buy that. I also noticed you had no, uh, no Death Mist Raptors and no Den Protectors anywhere. Den Protector, probably the best card that didn't make one of your decks? Yeah, certainly that combination is, yes. But not worth trying to juggle things around? You were just like, what are the best decks I can play that don't overlap much? Well, again, those are cards that want to be played with black spells, generally. Uh, you want to play it with your Thoughtseizes and Downfalls. So then you have your green deck and your black deck together, which is harder to make work. Okay. 
Yeah, I've seen some people try, I mean, Death Mist and Devotion, I guess, but it's just really not part of what that Yeah, is. I mean, I, I played Red Green Devotion, which normally has Death Mist Raptor in it, but it, I just really don't like the card in the deck, so I just played another mana guy instead. Seems to have worked out. Now, you play the three matchups, you get to see what Tom has done. He's also got a blue-black control deck, although his is the Adrian Sullivan creatureless variety. He's also got a green-red deck, although it's the dragon version, uh, not the Devotion deck. And he's got Jeskai. So we get to match four, and you're trying to figure out, like, what do I play when I know he's got those? What was... Walk me through that process. Yeah, so basically, uh, I thought he was most likely to play Esper because I thought he had good matchups basically across the board with his, or with his blue-black deck. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was his most likely deck to play, and I thought Esper was my best deck against that. And okay. that's why I went with it. Um I think uh, both his Jeskai deck and his Red Green deck were bad against the my Red Green uh, Devotion deck. So like, I have a deck that's that I think is good against two, like two of two thirds of his decks, but it's very weak to his as his blue black deck. So blue black is like the natural counter to like my natural deck to go to against like the majority of his decks. So you were pretty happy when he showed up playing the Jeskai, even though you'd lost that matchup once. Uh, no, I, I did not want to see Jeskai there. I think I would rather, like, my order of preference was definitely him to play blue-black, Jeskai, red-green. Red-green, okay. I think, was the worst matchup for Esper. And Jeskai, I think his list, I haven't seen his list, but I think the that he, the way he had it built is probably not good for Esper. Okay. Makes sense. So, through to the finals. It's been a pretty interesting season for you. You did a fair amount of brewing over the course of the regular season. Feels like, you know, got serious right at the end and just treated us to an awesome run last week. And yeah, those, the, those were some awesome games to play. It is, oh, a little, yeah. it, is a little, it is a little disappointing that the nature of the, the playoffs format makes it really bad for brews. Because a lot of the, like, sweet decks you can build are looking to prey on green decks. And, like, the, there can only be, like, at most one-third cursors in the metagame. So, like, your natural prey for, like, something like, you know, an Ascendancy combo deck just is way, way less present. Uh, so, definitely wanted to have a chance. I never got a chance to play, like, a Cantrip Ascendancy combo deck that I wanted to try out. Never got a chance to play that. And the, the, the playoff format just makes it uh, pretty rough to do that. Fair enough. Now, I didn't get a chance to talk to you last week because the, the show went kind of long. But tell me about that matchup. <laughs> the finals against oh Brad God. Nelson. What was... What was going through your mind over the course of that matchup? Uh, mostly about how unlucky I was getting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, re really though, uh, I I wasn't really like thinking of anything like other than like what to play. So um, obviously it was an insane match, uh, and it was just like just I was just on edge, like you know, any any like trying to hang on by like the slimmest of margins in both of those games. So. Yeah, the two comebacks, game two and game three, they were both just masterfully played, right, like you said, right on the edge, and yet you got there. Had to feel, had to, had to be a fun match to win. The end of <laughs> oh, that was an incredible match. That Matches like that are why you play Magic. Like, it's just so, so good. Uh, yeah. So is that, at the end of that, are you collapsing in exhaustion, or are you just, you know, huge adrenaline rush, feeling good about... Oh, colla um, I collapsed in, exhaust in exhaustion. I went home and went straight to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not done yet. You won that. You won this. So Tom Ross has been knocked out in third place. We'll see you again next week. Be interesting to see if with another week to mess around with Unified Standard, maybe you get some new tricks up your sleeve for Owen. Is it Obviously. is it next week or is it Sunday? It's next week. It's it's Tuesday. Okay. The we website had the website had said Sunday. I need to change that. Yeah, we had talked about having the finals on Sunday, um, but we decided to just stick with the, the Tuesday night Super League plan, and then we go straight into the Vintage Super League without skipping a Tuesday. So there was initially thought about starting VSL next week and then having the finals on Sunday, but that's not happening. I will go change the website as soon as we close the showdown. So Tuesday, same time, same place. We'll see you. We'll see Owen Turtwald. Should be uh, should be quite the final. I You got... Any any specific history with Owen that uh, that comes to mind? Who you've probably played a lot over the years? Yeah, we, we've definitely played a lot. Uh, I don't think there's any like. He's probably beat me more than I beat him. Is that right? <laughs> probably, yeah. All right. 
Well, we'll see what happens next week. One of you will go down as the first Super, Super League champion, standard Super League champion. Tune in next week, guys. We'll be back next Tuesday. For Luis, for Josh, this is Randy Bueller saying see you guys next week.